Korea, a crowded little finger of land extending out of Asia's mainland, a nation not much larger than our state of Minnesota. On June 30th, 1950, five years after World War II ended, America went to war again. U.S. ground troops were sent to Korea, where forces from the communist north, aided by the Soviet Union and then China, were threatening the pro-Western government in the south. The three-year conflict overshadowed by the Second World War is often called the Forgotten War. And these are its forgotten victims, the families of nearly 8,000 men still classified as missing in action. MIA is a, a very difficult term to live with, not knowing. It's hard to put closure when well, you don't know. Felt like an orphan was an orphan. They called us war orphans. John Zimmerly's father, an Air Force captain, disappeared while flying a night mission in 1952. He wasn't known to be killed in action. He wasn't known to have died in a prison camp. He's just missing. A fate shared by many men, lost in areas difficult to access, some inside North Korea. In May, the siblings, spouses, and children of two dozen U.S. service members who never returned from the battlefield were invited as guests of the South Korean government to visit the country where their loved ones were last seen. For most, it was the first time they'd ever come here. The trip was organized by volunteer Sonny Lee, who was born near Seoul during the war. Why does the South Korean government spend this sort of money to bring the families of veterans here? To pay back, um, to show them how much we appreciate it. And to introduce Korea to the families who sacrificed so much. Showing off its music, its dances, even its fashion. <laughs> Families paid for half of the flight. Everything else was picked up by the South Korean government. It's overwhelming. Suzanne Schilling's dad, a Marine pilot whose plane was shot down over North Korea in 1952, was honored as a hero. We all thought it was a tour of Korea. We'd see battlefields, we would see memorials had no idea that they were going to celebrate us at the level that they did. Memorial services were held at the National Cemetery, at a military base, and near the demilitarized zone that divides North and South. At the War Museum, families found the names of their loved ones inscribed on a wall. Robert Warren's father disappeared during a reconnaissance mission behind enemy lines. I've never seen him memorialized or commemorated or anything of that nature in the United States. And to come all the way to Korea and see his name on the wall was a, a, a shock, a surprise, and something I was not emotionally prepared for at the time. Morin was also not prepared to see South Korea's appreciation for America's role in a war fought more than 60 years ago. The authenticity of their gratitude is astonishing. I mean, they could not possibly fake what we're experiencing from people here. It just, there, there aren't that many good actors in South Korea. When you look at these names, you know some of the families. Oh, yes, many of them. Um. Sonny Lee, who now lives in Utah, first pitched to the Korean government the idea of a trip for these families of those missing in action. Why do you take this so personally? Why do you feel so deeply? Well, it's like, uh, you know, if you are in a burning car, somebody came to save your life. Don't you feel that the, they're your hero to pay back? for the rest of your life. I feel like that. 
We have stopped the shooting. When the armistice was signed in July 1953, South Korea lay in ruins. People were starving. Millions were dead. But within 60 years and with the help of foreign aid money, South Korea transformed itself into the world's 14th largest economy and sixth largest exporter, in part due to the popularity of Korean brands, including Samsung and LG, Kia and Hyundai. Economists refer to it as the miracle on the Han River, a miracle that South Koreans insist in part resulted from the American sacrifices that earned them their freedom from communism. This trip was a celebration of that sacrifice for what John Zimmerly calls war orphans. I'm here with other war orphans and all of a sudden we all have that camaraderie. We've seen it, all the pictures just kind of arose in one line behind me. It was like all the guys were here, all the guys that were missing had come back. It was, it's the most, it's, it's the most emotional I've gotten about this whole issue. And I have had emotional moments over the past, but all of a sudden it made sense. Finally, finding a sense of closure more than 60 years later.